Hey, this is Eric Kurtz, and welcome to Control-Alt-Achieve for April 7th, 2019. Today's topic, Hipster Google, Part 2. So, a couple of years ago, I shared my original hipster Google post on my blog where I listed a collection of lesser known Google tools. Now, the idea was to have some fun with the hipster theme where something is cool because very few people know about it, uh, like a band that hasn't become popular yet, or a restaurant that's hidden away, or a style that's not mainstream. Well, at that time, I put together a collection of hipster Google tools that weren't as popular as the big ones like Gmail and Drive and Docs and such. Now, even though these Google tools may have flown under the radar, uh, they were still very valuable for use in the classroom. Well, since then, so many new Google tools have come out. Now, I've done my best to grab these new ones when they come out and add them to my ever-growing list of Google tools. However, I did not update the original blog post to share these new tools in detail. So I figured it was time for a new entry to share all of the awesome new hipster Google resources. Now you can see the original list of hipster Google tools in my blog post from a couple of years back at www.controlaltachieve.com slash hipster. But for the new list of tools we're exploring today, you'll want to see the new post at www.controlaltachieve.com slash hipster2. Now this current post has 22 hipster Google resources, but we're just going to chat about five of them during the episode here today. I would encourage you to check out the post for the full list and to get details on each one of them. Now, as always, chances are you will have heard of some of these, but hopefully there'll be a few new ones on the list for you to explore. So let's all put on our thick rimmed glasses and our slouchy beanies. There we go. And let's take a look at these awesome tools from the list. So the first tool that we're going to take a look at of the five is called Data GIF Maker. Now, we all want students to work with real world data. So after they've collected it and analyzed it and drawn conclusions, we want them to be able to share their data in a manner that's engaging and it conveys the information clearly. Well, one tool that can help with this is Google's Data GIF Maker. It's a very simple website that lets students come in and pick between three different styles of diagrams. There's rectangles, circles, and racetrack. Now, after they pick the style that they want, the students can then add in their data series, anywhere from two to three to four, just depending upon which one they are doing. Then for a result, what they'll end up getting is a cool animated GIF that shows their data, which the student can then link to or can download to embed in their slides, docs, or other projects. This can be a great way to let students explore interesting data visualizations and to improve how they share that data with others. The second of the hipster Google tools we're going to highlight here is a Google Docs add-on called Story Speaker. Now, there's a lot of ways for students to create choose your own adventure stories, including Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Forms, and lots of other ways. Well, one really creative option is to use a Google Docs add-on called Story Speaker. What Story Speaker does is gives you a template in Google Docs that you can fill out to fill in your own story and the choices and the different branching options. Now you can keep it really simple or you can use the advanced template to uh, have more uh, options and have more fun with what you create. 
Now the final story that you make can be played right inside of the Google Doc, or you can play it on a Google Home or with the Google Assistant. Now when you play it, the story will actually be read aloud, and then the user can speak their responses to those choices. Here, we'll try this out here. You're standing in a forest. There are two roads in front of you. Do you go to the left or the right? All right. Now this can be an awesome tool for students to practice creative writing, to plan out a branching story or maybe a review quiz, and also learn a little bit about syntax in the process, which can be a nice lead in to coding. The third tool that we're going to take a look at from our hipster Google collection is called Symantris. Now, Symantris is a fun word game from Google that's like a vocabulary version of Tetris. Except in this version, instead of shapes falling down from the top, you're having words fall down. Now, what you need to do, of course, is eliminate those words, and you do it by typing in a word or a phrase that best identifies the word you're trying to get rid of, but without actually using the word itself in your clue. Google's AI then tries to guess which word you meant and removes that block along with any same colored blocks touching it. Now, as the game goes on, uh, more words fall down and they become more and more similar. This is a fun game to help students expand their vocabulary while working on selecting precise words and phrases to best define a word. And for what it's worth, uh, my current high score is 11,950. Uh, and I do apologize in advance for any game addictions that sharing this causes. The fourth tool we're going to take a look at is called Chrome Canvas. Now, there are a lot of online tools for drawing, diagramming, and annotating. Uh, however, sometimes you just need something real simple and quick. Chrome Canvas is a great match for that need. With this tool, you can start with a blank canvas or you can upload an image to draw on top of. You then can draw with several different tools. There's a pencil, there's a pen, a marker, and some chalk. Uh, there's even an eraser, and you can come up here and choose the colors that you want to use. When you're done, the final product can be downloaded as an image. And of course, anything that you make in Chrome Canvas is automatically saved to your Google Drive. This can be a quick and easy tool for you and your students to make a diagram, to annotate on top of an image, write out a problem, draw a picture, or more. And the fifth and final tool of the 22 from the blog post that we're going to be looking at here is a Chrome extension called Tune, T-U-N-E. Now, the name may make this sound like it's a music tool, but Tune is actually an experimental tool to try to make your online experience more pleasant. Now, as we all know, there's a lot of different opinions online, and this diversity of thought is actually one of the most beneficial aspects of having a global community. However, sometimes the comments that get shared online can become toxic, uh, attacking, insulting. Well, Tune is a Chrome extension that allows you to control the level of toxicity in the comments that you view online with sites like YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and more. What you do is you simply turn the dial in the settings of the extension to adjust which comments you see. You can go all the way from seeing full comments to no comments at all in Zen mode, and of course, everything in between. Now, using artificial intelligence, this extension will hide comments that are more toxic than the level you set. But there's always an option to click on the comment to see it if desired. Now, this tool could be an interesting option to allow students to benefit from social websites while filtering out some of the harmful and hateful content. Now, certainly it's not a total solution by itself, but Tune may be a useful tool and a broad collection of resources for digital citizenship and digital well-being. 
Now, those are just five of the 22 resources in the new hipster Google tools blog post that I have put up. Um, at that blog post, you can get links to all of the tools I mentioned here as well as the other 17 that we did not go into with uh, links to the tool and a description of how it works and some screenshots to show you it in action. Again, you can find all that information at www.controlaltachieve.com slash hipster2, hipster followed by the number two. If you know of any lesser known but useful Google tools, please let me know. I'm always looking for new ones. As always, you can share any questions, comments, resources, or any feedback you have in several ways. Feel free to leave comments below the blog post on the site. Uh, leave comments below the YouTube video that goes along with this. Leave a review in iTunes. Uh, tag me on Twitter uh, with at Eric Kurtz or send an email to eric at controlaltachieve.com. And I will try to share comments from time to time in future episodes. So until the next episode, as always, be kind to each other and be kind to yourself. Take care. So why did the hipster burn his tongue? He ate his food before it was cool.